Welcome back to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're honored to share some exciting news and celebrate a nonprofit doing so much good in our community, Code Crew. We're joined by their executive director, our good friend, Mecca Igwekwe. And Mecca, let's start out, buddy. How are you doing? Doing well, uh, Jeremy. Always great to see you. And I'm so honored for this opportunity to be on your show again. Uh, thank you so much for this. And uh, and yeah, things are going well for us. Uh, we are we are uh, managing through uh, difficult times, of course, uh, for the whole country and the whole world. But uh, blessed to to be where we are and continuing to to uh, do the do our work in this challenging space. Well, let's start out before we share the exciting news. Let's start with some context. So, 2015. Give us a little bit of a history lesson for Code Crew. Sure, sure. So uh, in May of 2015, uh, myself, along with Petia Grady and uh, Audrey Willis, the three of us came together to found Code Crew, uh, originally to, uh, uh, with some support from the Memphis Grizzlies Foundation, to, to bring a uh, great summer camp experience to kids at the Leicester Community Center in Binghampton, uh, where they learned how to make mobile apps. Uh, but uh, the three of us saw this as an opportunity to move the needle in Memphis around computer science education, especially bringing diversity to computer science. Uh, and so uh, what started as that single summer camp has now grown into uh, multiple after school programs, multiple in school electives, teacher training programs, uh, as well as uh, success of getting uh, legislation passed at the state level. Uh, we we uh, shepherded a bill for Tennessee to finally have a statewide plan for computer science education. And we're working on some additional le legislation now with some great partners. And then also we've got an adult program now that trains adults to become entry-level software engineers. So, so we've really grown a lot in these past five and a half years and it's uh, been exciting, uh, but you know, uh, still a lot of work to do. Yeah, well, and when you talk about moving the needle, to your point, you know, it starts with small and, you know, it starts with a few students. The next thing you know, you've reached thousands. And then all of a sudden you start seeing it's like, okay, it's working, it's working, it's working. You're starting to see the stats and not only the stats in terms of the numbers of, of youth and adults that you're serving, but also to the economic impact and the transformation that takes place in their life. And we'll talk about that in a second too, but dive in deeper on the programs, because as you mentioned, you've got the K-12 and you have the adult side now. So walk us through the, the programs. Sure, sure. So um, there are really sort of six layers to what is Code Crew. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll, maybe I'll start with the adult program. That is, you know, our philosophy at Code Crew is that a couple of things that I, I heard in college. One is that uh, he who is behind in the race of life must run twice as fast as the ones in front. <laughs> and so we do a lot of things, which is why we have this multi multi layer comprehensive approach. Um, and uh, you know, also we we uh, we believe in a short, medium, and long-term play, right? And so the adult program is one w that's really more of a short-term play. It is can we can we look at the reality of Memphis of some forty-five thousand opportunity youth who are you know sixteen to twenty-four years old who are not in high school, not in college, not working, and uh, can can if 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 there's 45,000 of them, and can we get 1% of them if they, if they just have access and the aptitude to do this, to consider being software engineers and to do it. And so, uh, you know, that's 450 new software engineers. And so, so that adult program really started from that, that calculation um, with the idea of in six months, scaling someone up with the skills that they need to become an entry-level software engineer. And then, at the, you know, meeting that need for uh, people who have access, to, uh, to have access to an opportunity at the same time where employers need the talent, right? Companies up and down uh, Memphis and all around the country are, are complaining about not having enough tech talent. So can we bring those two together? And so that, 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 that short term layer uh, in the, the adult program feels that need um, for our, uh, the rest of what we do is primarily K-12 uh, and so we've got in-school electives classes where our, our uh, instructors go into classrooms and well, not, now we're doing it virtually, right? <laughs> but, but historically we've gone into classrooms uh, along with uh, teaching assistants who are college students who uh, help those instructors to teach, you know, uh, computer science classes consistent with, you know, the state's requirements in that regard um, and try to give them the rigor that we think kids need to have access to in school, uh, including homework and grades and tests uh, it, it needs to be on their report card. And so, so uh, kids take computer science and coding classes from us like they would a music or a French class, 
uh, at that in-school elective layer. Uh, we also do after-school and summer programs. Uh, as I mentioned, we started as a, as a summer camp, uh, the Grizzlies Code Camp, which we still operate to this day every summer. Um, but but um, you know, can can we can we have these engagements with uh, kids in the summer as well as after school to expose them to things like robotics, mobile app development, drone programming, uh, video game development, circuit board programming, a lot of a lot of different areas that kids are interested in. They can make make things and they can have fun, but at the same time, they're learning to think computationally. And both in terms of the in school electives and the after school and summer programs, those are all mentor based relationships. So. Uh, you know, we believe that healthier relationships between adults and kids uh, result in kids being more likely to pursue computer science for college, career, and entrepreneurship. And even if they they, they decide that this is not something they want to do, uh, ultimately they're making an informed decision instead of assuming that it's just for white and Asian males, which in our city, uh, given our demographics, is uh, detrimental to us if we don't convince more uh, from those underrepresented groups to pursue, pursue these careers because those underrepresented groups are our largest and fastest growing demographics. And so uh, we, in, in addition to that, we, we have a number of events throughout the year. We have the largest hackathon for youth in the Memphis area. Uh, we, we have uh, just this past um, November, I think it was, that we, we actually partnered with the Tariq Black Foundation and a, uh, and a uh, sports tech company in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel called Coliseum Sport to bring 25 kids in Memphis and 25 kids in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem together on an online platform like this to, to um, build sports tech businesses. And they built working prototypes along the way too. So uh, and competed for prizes in that way. So, so we have lots of these kinds of events uh, to raise awareness and exposure. The, with some of these kids we may not ever see again, but we hope to that there's a fire in them that they're interested in uh, coding and computer science. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think I want to touch on it real fast because you, you mentioned a lot of really neat things that I think the listeners and the viewers of this need to kind of pull out. And one is the problem solving. And to your point, when you talk about the work you do, there's a lot of foundational elements that regardless of whether they go into that as a career will really be extremely valuable for them and just their trajectory in life and, and career either way. And so problem solving is a big piece of that creativity, uh, even communication. I mean, there's so many pieces of that. And then when you talk about just the, the ripple effect it creates, not only for the companies, but also obviously the individuals, you're moving the needle because when you look at the stats, you know, average of about $15,000 in terms of the salary they're making at the time, they go through your program, get exposed to these new opportunities, and now they're close to 50,000. So that's a huge transformation for them economically, and it's helping to bring in new businesses that are realizing, wait a second, there's talent in this community. Thanks to what Code Crew is doing, I want to move or build my business there in Memphis. So you're creating an, a lot of economic drivers in a lot of ways, it's creating a ripple effect. And I think that's important to be able to kind of pull out of the work that you're doing. And, and it is, I mean, that's obviously one of our chief objectives is to, is to again, change the narrative about Memphis uh, uh, in so many ways, right? So, uh, employers ought to be uh, looking at Memphis as a source for talent. Um, and, and we ought to be showing the rest of the country how to bring diversity to this tech space, right? And, and so there's uh, so many ways that uh, I think we have a lot to offer the country, uh, but, but certainly have a lot to offer employers and a lot to offer individuals as they uh, consider pathways for themselves that they might not have otherwise considered. Uh, and especially uh, you know, given the fact that previously they probably didn't have uh, an, uh, sufficient access to these kinds of opportunities. And so, so yeah, um, uh, you know, that adult program, especially the adult code school, it is, uh, it has been transformative in the lives of several uh, individuals and they, they have their own powerful stories about how uh, their salaries uh, tripling. In fact, there's one instance where uh, one person went uh, tenfold increase in terms of her uh, uh, annual income and uh, to and raise and, and she's raising kids. <laughs> and so, um, so we, we need that. Uh, um, I, I say all the time that, uh, you know, while some of our politicians will tell you that crime is the number one problem in Memphis, I don't believe that at all. I think poverty is the number one problem in Memphis. I believe what Dr. King said that, that it's poverty and ignorance that breed crime, that crime is a symptom. The poverty, if we can address that and people can be plugged into ways to, to bring uh, income to their families, uh, it makes a big difference to them. And at the same time, employers are, are, are more productive 
because they've got this talent that they need. So it's a win-win all the way around. We need to pour gasoline on this. And so that's why we're so thankful for those who support us uh, in the ways that so many have been so kind to do. Well, that's a perfect transition when you talk about supporting you into the big news. So talk about $300,000 that was really kind of a blessing that, that just came to you. You didn't apply for it or anything. It just came to you, which was amazing. So share the story. Sure, sure. Our, our friends at Niantic, uh, they're the makers of Pokemon Go. Uh, they have been world leaders with respect to augmented reality and uh, and so forth. Uh, everyone knows the Pokemon Go game. Um, and uh, last year, they were moved by uh, what we all across the nation were moved by, the, uh, the challenges around social justice. And certainly there is an, uh, an awakening and awareness uh, an increased awareness in, the, in that regard. And so they decided that they were going to make gifts, sizable gifts to a number of organizations around the country uh, that, are, that they viewed were contributing to a better America uh, uh, with that theme of social justice. And so, um, you know, I didn't even see the announcement. Uh, we, we simply, uh, they reached out to us late last year uh, uh, and they had already done their due diligence on us. There was no application process at all. And they, they gifted us $300,000. Uh, and, uh, and when my, uh, when my uh, director of advancement uh, and strategic uh, communications, Keila Jones, reached out to me, she said, Maker, you need to sit down. I said, okay, I thought something was wrong. And <laughs> she told me that Niantic was giving us $300,000. She was right, I needed to sit down because I would have I collapsed uh, from such exciting news. And that is the single largest uh, corporate gift we have ever received. Um, and we're thankful for them believing in our work enough uh, to entrust us to put these dollars to a, a better Memphis and a better uh, country through through tech education. So it's really, really exciting. Speaking of exciting, and I think, you know, that to your, to your point speaks about adding gasoline on the flames, because to be able to do what you do to create more change, you need more of those resources so that you can help and, and continue to pour in. And I think that to me is a powerful storyline about how, how that $300,000 is going to transform what you do, but it's also going to transform so many lives in the process and how that becomes an example for others to say, Hey, Look at what we can do in terms of being good stewards with these opportunities to create transformation in lives and in our community. Carry that forward into another big opportunity for our city that you're working with, and it's the CS for All Summit. So talk about the CS for All Summit. Sure, sure. So CS for All is a great New York-based organization that uh, that's you know extremely well connected with all the major players with respect to the tech space uh, both in terms of producers as well as educators um, and they every year they uh every year since 2016 the actual first cs for all summit was in it was actually at the white house in 2016 and each year they've moved it from uh different cities right st louis detroit salt lake city um and and i said why not memphis <laughs> and so uh, i threw uh you know, I and Code Crew, we threw our we threw Memphis's name in the hat, uh, and we were selected for the next CS for All Summit. And th this is an annual conference where they they you know between six and seven hundred computer science educators in the K twelve space from around the country and some from outside the country come to the host city and. Uh, exchange ideas and best practices, but also celebrate the successes, especially around uh, public commitments to computer science education. Uh, and so, so uh, I was thrilled that they, they chose Memphis. Uh, of course, they chose Memphis early last year, the pandemic hit, uh, it was supposed to have been in October 2020. Uh, they agreed, we all agreed that we couldn't do it in October 2020. Uh, but uh, could we move it to October 2021? <clears throat> and can can uh, would they still keep it in Memphis? And they they stayed absolutely committed to doing that, and so so we're thankful to be partners with them to host what we uh, plan to be the biggest and best CS for All Summit uh, in the history of of, of their summits, uh, and bring attention to computer science education, but also bring attention to the exciting things that are happening in Memphis and across Tennessee, for uh, and across our region for computer science education. So we are thrilled. Uh, above the moon, over the moon about about uh, this opportunity, and we will definitely um, take full advantage of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I love that you're such a huge ambassador for our community. Talk about how we can help. Obviously, as we mentioned, financial contributions to underwrite your efforts are extremely important. What are some other ways we can help? 
Sure, sure. So uh, absolutely, of course, naturally, any nonprofit like we are, uh, is, is still a business. And so, uh, so uh, funding and finances are the lifeblood for any such organization. So obviously, there's always room for that. Uh, but, but certainly, um, we have opportunities for people to be engaged with technical and non technical skills, right. So, uh, you know, Many people think that we're we're all volunteer. We're actually not. We actually have 14 full-time people, uh, another 20 to 25 part-time people, um, and uh, and so if if you're interested in doing some instruction or or, or being a teaching assistant, uh, you can do that with us, and you would be paid to do that as well. Right. Um, uh, uh, but in addition, you know, we have number uh, uh, the number of events that are primarily volunteer based. Um, and so we definitely uh, need the, the help of uh, technical and non-technical people to do those things. Um, we also have a lot of people who bring non-technical skills uh, with us uh, to us and around marketing, a great partnership with a New York based PR firm that's been getting a lot of uh, good press for us uh, that, and they're doing that on a pro bono basis, uh, for example. And so, uh, so there are lots of, lots of ways to plug in if you've got talent uh, you know, we are still a nonprofit, and if your talents can work at a nonprofit, uh, we we have a slot for you. Um, and uh, and certainly, we need people to uh, be willing to open up their rolodexes and help us grow our network. Right? Uh, we, we're trying to build. Uh, a, you know, what, what we're trying to do, we're trying to bring to a national scale. I mean, that's that's one of our top priorities now. And uh, and so while you know, obviously, we love Memphis. Our home is Memphis, but we think we have a lot to offer the rest of the country. And so, uh, opening up your networks for us, uh, exposing us, and connecting us to people that can help drive this movement forward uh, towards this mission and vision uh, would be tremendously appreciated. And so, and then certainly, just reach out to me. Um, <laughs> and uh, and and. Um, you know, there, there are ways we can talk about creatively how, how uh, you can help. So I'm probably not even scratching the surface in terms of all the ways. Well, uh, but, but I think that's the, uh, that's the idea is, you know, if you, if you have, if you just want to raise your hand, you'll put them to good use in whatever way, you know, that's where the conversation starts is, hey, I want to be a part of the solution. And next thing you know, you're having a conversation, you figure out how best to, to help. And so last question is the easy one is talk about contact information. So how do we get in touch with you? Sure, sure, absolutely. Well, it's always a great place to start on our website. That's code-crew.org. Uh, so certainly there, and certainly follow us on all the major social media. So we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, um, we're on Snapchat and TikTok too. <laughs> so um, so certainly follow us there. Um, I think our, our uh, handle on most of those is underscore code crew and code crew has no spaces, no dashes. Right. Uh, and so, so you can, uh, though the website has a dash, that's a long story. Uh, and so, um, uh, so you can find us on social media. Uh, certainly you can reach out to, to us. It's probably best to reach out to our team account team at code dash crew.org. Uh, it's probably the best way because uh, I'm drowning in my email, but my assistant, uh, Virginia is tremendously, uh, efficient and helpful in terms of making sure uh, things don't get dropped. And, uh, and then certainly, you know, always you can call us at 901-229-1720 as well. And so, so, so many ways to connect with us, uh, but the, obviously the easiest and best way with all that information I just stated is available on our website. Uh, you can also find out about our programs. Uh, we've got uh, uh, our spring after school programs are open to kids all across the city. In fact, really all across the country, we've got some kids, a group of kids from Philadelphia that are actually doing our after school programs now. Um, and, and, um, and so you can you can uh, sign up for those. They're, they actually restart for the spring on um, uh, the last week of January, which I think is next week. <laughs> and so, so, um, so yeah, so lots of ways to uh, to engage with us uh, as uh, to sign up in our, our our adult program as well. We've got a part time program that is uh, starting again in March, and so you, there's more in that as well on our website. Uh, that adult program is called the Code School. And uh, look for big things from us this year too. Uh, our anniversary, our sixth year anniversary is on the 4th of May. And so we are excited uh, to, to have some big announcements then. Uh, and, um, and then also, uh, I'll just add one more plug if I may. Um, you know, we have been challenged last year. We actually lost uh, three individuals in the Code Crew family last year for different reasons, right? Uh, uh, but one of them was my dear friend, Christopher Fields, who, uh, we have been friends for 35 years, but he was also our social media manager. And, uh, and so we established a scholarship in his name. And so if you want to help 
kids continue to pursue computer science in college. Uh, uh, the recipients of that scholarship must major in computer science and attend one of the area uh, colleges in computer science. Um, and um, you can give to that scholarship fund as well uh, on, on our website, the Christopher D. Fields uh, Memorial Scholarship. So, uh, so lots and lots of ways to get involved and, and connect with us. Uh, and, but we thank you for everyone who supported us uh, in all the many, many ways uh, from sharing the word to giving of their time, energy and talent and, and treasure. And uh, we're just thankful to, to, for so many to believe in us and we, we are gonna move forward for Better Memphis. Absolutely. Well, Meka, thank you for all you and your team do. Absolutely amazing work. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you as well, Jeremy. Always good to see you, my friend.